Welcome to another episode of Simmer Clips. And today's question is inspired by our core server-side tagging in Google Tag Manager. And let's take a look at the community question right now. How do I assign a static IP address to the outgoing requests from my server-side GTM container? So the use case here is that you're communicating with a vendor or uh, a database that needs to allow list the incoming IP addresses so that it doesn't accept requests from just any source. The problem with your server-side tagging setup when running on Google Cloud Run is that the serverless architecture uses a random pool of IP addresses for all outgoing requests. So even multiple requests from the same tagging server might all use a different IP address. And even though there's a list of those IP addresses, allow listing every one of them will be complicated and vendors probably won't even agree to do it. And there's no telling if that pool will ever change because it's likely to change when new addresses are added to it. You might think that assigning a static outgoing address is as easy as assigning a static incoming address because that's what we do with the load balancer, but it's actually much more complicated than that. In this video, I'll show you how to set up the architecture in Google Cloud Run for assigning a static outgoing IP address to a subset of requests targeted at this one specific vendor or these vendors that need to allow this thing incoming requests. But it's going to be kind of complicated and we have to start with some architecture education first before we dive into how to actually do it. So in this image, you can see the starting point of a typical server-side tagging cluster in Cloud Run. We have a load balancer that sits in front of the cluster and then we have multiple tagging servers. Or you might just have a single tagging server, but you should always use a load balancer. And I've added links to the article and the video notes where I'll show you how to add the load balancer in front of your setup. The load balancer doesn't just redirect traffic to different servers. It's also the way to assign a custom domain to your entire cluster and to use things like cloud armor and logging and CDN capabilities to improve the throughput of your entire setup. But this is the typical scenario. So you have tagging servers that send requests to vendors. And each one of these requests can have a different IP address. So if the vendor needs to allow list the IP addresses so that IP addresses that are not in the list will be ignored, it's going to be difficult to do with this architecture. So what you're going to need instead is a virtual private cloud. So normally your tagging servers communicate with the outside internet by just sending requests, HTTP requests to outside servers. And that's a normal way to do it. But as said, they will all have different IP addresses or most of the time they'll have different IP addresses. With a virtual private cloud, instead of sending the request directly to the internet, the request is routed using an internal IP address such as 10.0.124.2 to a virtual private cloud within the Google Cloud Platform. In that virtual private cloud, the hits go through a cloud NAT gateway or a network address translator gateway, which assigns them to a static IP address such as 31.124.56.112. And this IP address, the static IP address is the one that the vendor then allow lists. So we can build a mechanism where the tagging server, your cloud run server, sends the hits to the VPC or the virtual private cloud instead of directly to the vendor. Now, the problem with this approach is that the connection between the tagging server and the gateway is cloud run service specific. So if you have three tagging servers and you want them all to have the static outgoing address, you're going to need to create three connectors, which are then routed by the cloud NAT gateway. And each one of these VPC connectors will cost money. They're all running on virtual machines. So you need to pay for those virtual machines and you also need to pay for the network egress traffic. And it's not a trivial cost. It's going to be at least like 20 USD per month per connector. And depending on how much traffic you're sending through it, it's going to balloon up to hundreds of dollars a month if you're not careful. So this is not a scalable solution. Besides, you don't need to have all your outgoing requests with a static IP address. You just need them for those requests that are targeted at this one specific vendor. So what we're going to do today is we're going to build a new tagging server specifically designed for the requests to the vendors who need to allow list those IP addresses. And we're going to configure the load balancer to redirect all traffic that has a specific URL identifier to the tagging server 
where it will have the static IP address. This way will minimize the amount of traffic that needs to be decorated for the static IP address and make sure that all the other requests flow through your regular service cluster. So to build this, we're gonna have to have a number of components in place. We're gonna need to reserve a part of our virtual private cloud network specifically for this pipeline because we don't want all the outgoing services in this project that might use our virtual private cloud to go through that VPC connector because it costs some money every time it needs to run. We'll also need to create the CloudNet gateway. We'll also need to reserve the static IP address and we'll also need to create the new Cloud Run server and modify the load balancer. So there's a lot of stuff to cover here and make sure you check out the article that I've linked to in the video notes because we're gonna expand all of this theory there as well. So the first thing we'll need to do is reserve a subnet in our virtual private cloud for this pipeline. This is kind of a separation of concerns and it's a good idea to do in any case. So in the search bar of Google Cloud Platform, find VPC networks and click the result. You'll have a default network with a number of subnets created for it. You could create a new VPC network altogether to separate the concerns even further. But because we're only running our Cloud Run cluster here and we have no other services that need our VPC, we're kind of comfortable in using the existing network, but we will create a new subnet for it. Now the subnets that you see listed here all correspond with a region. So if there's internal traffic within the Google Cloud Platform for a specific region, it gets a range that is listed here. Now by default, the VPC isn't used by your setup because as said, your Cloud Run is communicating directly with the outside internet. But we want to now create a new VPC subnet with an internal IP range that hasn't been reserved yet and we need to choose a region for it. So we're gonna create our new subnet in the US East 1 region and we're gonna choose an internal IP range that hasn't been reserved yet. So we're gonna use the prefix 124 because the lowest prefix here is 128. So click add subnet to create the new subnet. And I'm gonna use the same naming convention for all the services I'm gonna create here. So it's gonna be SST fixed IP. And the region is gonna be US East one. You should choose whatever region is closest to the bulk of the traffic that needs to have this static IP address. And then we're gonna Add the range here. Make sure the bits that you reserve is 28. So slash 28 is the last part. That is required by the VPC connector. And we're gonna leave the rest with 34 values. You can scroll down the list to see your subnet being created. Once this is done, we can next create the VPC connector. So in the menu of VPC network, click the serverless VPC access option. And here we're gonna create a new VPC connector. So the purpose of the VPC connector is to forward outgoing requests from Cloud Run to the virtual private cloud instead of to the out outbound internet. And this serverless VPC connector is what's gonna cost you money. That's where you'll need to run those virtual machines. So we're gonna create the connector. Let's give it a name. The region needs to match the subnet that you just created. So US East one. Network, if you have a custom network, you would choose it here, but we're using the default one. And then the subnet, you'll choose the one that you just created. Here you can see the estimated costs. By default, it's gonna cost at least 12 USD per month, but it's gonna scale up in case you have more bandwidth through the setup. So be considerate of this when you're creating your VPC connector. But we're gonna create this with these settings, and then we'll just wait for the connector to be created. So let's review what we've built now. We have, uh, serverless VPC connector designed to route requests from a cloud run service to a range of internal IP addresses that we've reserved for this particular purpose. And now we need to build a translator that takes those requests that come to the internal IP address and assigns a static IP address before forwarding them to the outside internet. So first of all, let's reserve that IP address. In the VPC network menu, choose IP addresses. And here we're gonna create a new external static IP address. Again, use whatever name you want. And from the list of regions, choose the region where you've built your whole setup until now. So US East one in my case, and then just click reserve. We don't need to attach it to anything because we're gonna do the attaching when we actually create the gateway. So now we've created the IP address. This IP address is the one that will be associated with all outgoing requests from the Cloud Run service that will patch through the VPC. So this is the IP address that you'll need to allow list for your vendors and your connected services. 
Finally, we need to create the actual gateway that assigns the static IP address to all the hits through this VPC subnet. And for that, we're going to need a cloud NAT gateway. So go to cloud NAT under network services and click to create a new gateway. We're going to name this. Then we need to select a cloud router. So the cloud router is an underlying technology that actually does the routing through the VPC and the cloud and controls how the cloud NAT gateway works. So choose your network and then the region that where this should be running. And then in the cloud router, click to create a new router. And we're going to call this with the name we've been using thus far and then click create to create it. Now, as you can see, there are two subnets found in US East 1. One is the default subnet and one is the custom one that we just built. So we want to make sure that the cloud net mapping applies only to the custom one that we built. So in the source, we're going to choose custom. And then from the list of subnets, we're going to choose the custom subnet that we built and all the IP ranges of that subnet will be mapped with the cloud net gateway. But then we need to select the actual IP address that's going to be associated with these requests. So from the list of CloudNet IP addresses, choose manual. And then from the list of IP addresses, you should find the one that you just created. So now all requests that go through this subnetwork will be mapped by the CloudNet gateway with this fixed IP address. So we're getting close to completion here. Click create to create the actual gateway. And it's up and running almost instantly. So now we have our pipeline, we have our virtual private cloud running, and now we just need to forward requests to it. For that purpose, let's go to cloud run. And here you can see your tagging servers. I have just one running in Europe West one, and then I have a preview server. Now you could modify your existing tagging servers to all route the traffic through the VPCs. But as I mentioned in the beginning, you would need to create a separate serverless connector for every one of those tagging services because it's region specific. And our VPC subnetwork is in the US East 1 region, so it couldn't even be applied to these existing services. We're going to create a new tagging server specifically designed for the static IP requests. To do that, let's select an existing tagging server. The preview server has nothing to do with this entire setup. The preview server never needs to be decorated for this kind of stuff because it's a completely internal mechanism to the GTM application. But in this case, we're going to take an existing tagging service and we're going to duplicate it with the copy option. Here, we're going to give it a name and a region that matches our VPC connector and our entire pipeline, actually. So US East 1 in this case. Remember to check to allow unauthenticated invocations. And then under containers, volumes, networking and security, we're going to go to the networking tab. And we're going to connect this particular cloud run service to a VPC. And we're going to use a serverless VPC access connector on the default network, where it will automatically find the SST fixed IP connector. Then we're going to route all traffic to this service to the VPC. So now all the traffic that runs through this cloud run server will be forwarded to the virtual private cloud, where it's going to get a static IP address assigned to the outgoing requests. Click create to create the cloud run service. Now we can go back to our cloud run list. So now we have our tagging server running in US East one. Now we just need to forward traffic to it. So for that, we need to go to our load balancer. If you don't have a load balancer yet, you need to create one. In general, you want to have a load balancer in front of your service cluster. But for this solution specifically, you need a load balancer. And I've added links to the video notes and the article for instructions on how to attach a load balancer to your setup. It's very easy to do with the custom domains integration, for example. So let's go to load balancing in the Google Cloud Platform. And here's my HTTPS load balancer. I'm going to click that to open it. And then click Edit. In the backend configuration, there's just a single backend service right now. If I had more than one tagging server, I would see more backends here corresponding with the different regions I've created the servers in. But now we need to add a new backend to this load balancer so that traffic can be forwarded to it. So in the list of backend services, we're going to create a new backend service. Let's call it something surprising like SST fixed IP. The backend type will be a serverless NAG, like all of our cloud run backends. And then we're going to create a new serverless NAG from the list. Let's give it another surprising name. Choose the region correctly. So this has to match the region of the cloud run service. 
select Cloud Run, and then select the SST fixed IP from the list of available services. Click Create to create the NAG, and then click Done here. Now scroll down and uncheck Cloud CDN. We don't need that for this for service. Check to enable logging. It's going to be a good idea to log the request so you'll know something's happening. I'm going to remove the Cloud Armor policy. You can add that if you want some extra protections. Under Advanced Configurations, I like to add a custom header to these requests so that I know that they are going through the correct backend service. So I'm going to add a custom request header, X fixed IP true. So all requests through this backend will now have this custom HTTP header in the incoming requests. This costs some money, not much, but and it's absolutely not necessary, but it's a good idea to have for debugging purposes. Click Create to create the backend service. Make sure they're both checked here. Click OK, and now you have your two backend services or more in case you've built additional Cloud Run services. Now in routing rules, we're going to create a simple host and path rule. So by default, all traffic to your load balancer to your server-side tagging endpoint will be forwarded to your main service cluster. But we're going to add a custom path for our vendor traffic. So add your host to the host field. And in the path, we're going to do vendor and asterisk. So all requests that come to this path will be forwarded to our fixed IP backend. Now, Using a custom path means that you're going to need a custom client in server-side tagging as well. In the article, I've added some notes on how to use query parameters or HTTP headers instead in case you want more flexibility. But you need something in the incoming request to identify the requests that need to be forwarded to the backend. This has to happen at incoming request time because the load balancer decides which backend to use and the load balancer thus decides that some of the traffic will get the static IP address. Once done, click update to update your load balancer. Once it's done, you'll see the new routing rule here and you'll see your backends listed with your fixed IP backend as well. So ne next thing to do is to test this whole setup. So first of all, go to the IP addresses page to make sure that you have a reference of what your static IP address is. Here we have it. Then we're going to go to Tag Manager. In Tag Manager, I've built a custom template that logs the outgoing IP address into the console. And I've added this template into the article notes if you want to give it a go as well. So we're going to go to preview mode here. And then we're going to start with a request to any other path than the one you reserved for the static IP. So here I sent a request to just testing. In preview mode, in the console tab, the IP address is 35.203.251.33. So it doesn't match the static IP address I reserved in GCP. And that's how it should be. And if I check the incoming request, expand its headers, you'll see that it doesn't have the X fixed IP header that we added to the backend service in the load balancer. So now let's send a request to the vendor path, because this is the one in the routing rule where we want the static IP address to be associated with it. Now, if we check the console, you can see that it has the static IP address 34148742.04, and it matches the static IP address exactly. So the outgoing request now has the static IP address. And if we take a look at its headers, we can see the X fixed IP header here. So here we used a path matching rule and now all requests, all incoming requests to the vendor path will have a static IP address associated with any outgoing requests from tags or clients that fire in the server container. Now you'll of course need to create a client for these requests or you can use something like the state data client to have all the requests to the state data client be decorated with the static IP address. And I've added some ideas about this in the article notes. So it's not a lightweight solution and it's going to cost you some money. But if you really do need to associate a static IP address with your outgoing requests, this is one way to do it in Cloud Run without having to go through the complexity of building a separate proxy server, because that's going to cost you even more money, because now the proxy server becomes an additional network hop before the request is sent to the outside internet.